So friends, here I've come up with the latest guidelines of the National Institute for Health and Care Excellence on Childhood Urinary Tract Infection. Coming on to the clinical presentation, the common symptom signs in decreasing order of frequency in infants less than 3 months of age is fever, vomiting, lethargy, irritability followed by poor feeding failure to thrive and abdominal pain, jaundice, immaturity, offensive urine in the decreasing order of frequency. Infants and children 3 months or older in age have been classified further as pre-verbal and verbal depending on the speaking abilities and the symptoms and signs have been described in the decreasing order as follows in the same. Testing for urine is indicated in infants and children presenting with symptoms and signs suggestive of UTI obviously, unexplained fever of 38 degree centigrade or 100.4 degree Fahrenheit or higher if they do not have signs of any other systemic involvement and an alternative site of infection but the child remains unwell even 24 hours after starting the antibiotic. A clean catch midstream urine sample is the recommended method for collecting urine for investigation purposes. However, if it is unobtainable, then NICE recommends other non-invasive methods like urine collection pads also and it says even when urine is not possible to be collected by non-invasive methods, even catheter samples are to be used, which I personally don't agree. And suprapubic aspiration obviously is one of the most sterile techniques of obtaining urine sample. But before suprapubic aspiration is attempted, ultrasound guidance should be used to demonstrate whether or not urine is present in, present in the bladder. Treatment should not, however, be delayed for delay in obtaining sample. Now, if urine is to be cultured but cannot be cultured within 4 hours of collection, the sample should be refrigerated or preserved with boric acid immediately. Now you must understand that unsterile samples like urine and stools should always be refrigerated so as to prevent the overgrowth and proliferation of bacteria normally present in the urine and stools. On the other hand, sterile site samples for example blood and CSF are to be preserved at room temperature if there is delay in processing to promote the growth of pathogen in them so that detection becomes easy because normally they are devoid of any organism. Now if you are using boric acid to preserve the urine sample must follow the manufacturer's instructions because excess of boric acid may harm the bacteria present in the urine and make the diagnosis of UTI difficult. In view of small number of false negative samples, clinicals must not underestimate their clinical acumen. So, if there are negative urine RM findings in patients with suspected UTI, then in infants less than 3 months of age, you must send a urine sample for urgent microscopy and culture. But in infants more than 3 months, rather 3 months to 3 years of age, you can do a dipstick test for leukocyte esterase and nitrite. This is the recommendation given by NICE of using these dipstick, te dipstick tests which we don't use routinely. Now, what is leukocyte esterase and nitrite? Leukocyte esterase is an enzyme which is present in WBCs. A few WBCs are also normally present in urine and usually a negative chemical test is obtained for leukocyte esterase. But when the number of WBCs increase significantly, for example in UTI, this test becomes positive. Similarly, many bacteria present in the urine, for example E. coli and Klebsiella as pathogens, they have an enzyme called nitrate reductase which converts the nitrates present in urine to nitrites and hence this shall also indicate the presence of bacteria that is UTA. If both leukocyte esterase and nitrite are negative, then one must not start antibiotics should send for a urine sample for microscopy and culture if there is strong clinical suspicion. However, if one or both are positive, one must start the antibiotic treatment along with sending a sample for urine culture. For testing children more than 3 years of age, the NICE recommends leukocyte esterase and nitrite as a screening test. And if both these tests are positive, then it is a definite urinary tract infection 
one must start antibiotics and send urine culture if intermediate or high risk of serious illness is present or there is a past history of urinary tract infection. If leukocyte esterase is negative but nitrite is positive, then you must confirm if it is a fresh sample. If it is a fresh sample, then definitely UTI should be considered and antibiotic should be started. If leukocyte esterase is positive, it can be false positive as well. Nitrite is negative, then you can consider withholding the antibiotics if there is no clinical evidence for the same. Must send the culture, wait for the reports of culture and then start the antibiotics accordingly. Now if leukocyte esterase is negative and nitrite is also negative, in that case you can safely rule out UTI but if the child is clinically unwell then you must consider starting antibiotics. Simultaneously you can send the urine culture. Clinical acumen however should never be underestimated. Rather the diagnostic criteria for urinary tract infection on culture is considered to be more than 10 to the power 5 colony forming units per ml of the bacterium or the pathogen. Now if pyuria, what is pyuria? Pyuria is the presence of pus. If pyuria is present or pyuria is negative but bacteriuria is positive, in that case UTI should be considered as a diagnosis. So if bacteria is present, whether or not pyuria is present, UTI is there. But if bacteria is negative, in this case if pyuria is present, then antibiotic at least should be started. But if pyuria is also negative, then you can safely rule out urinary tract infection. But again I would like to stress here that don't underestimate the clinical acumen. So urine samples should be straight away sent for culture in infants and children without screening if they are suspected to have acute pyelonephritis or upper urinary tract infection if they have high to intermediate risk of developing serious illness in all infants less than three months of age positive leukocyte esterase and nitrite dipstick test recurrent uti infection that does not respond to treatment within 24 to 48 hours if no sample has already been sent and when clinical symptoms and dipstick tests do not correlate with each other now in patients with confirmed uti you will get a history of poor urine flow, increased urine frequency, burning micturation, recurrent fever, constipation, dysfunction, and voiding previous UTI. Antenatally diagnosed renal abnormality can also be seen in children, and family history of UR or renal disease might be present. On examination, you can find a large bladder of abdominal mass, evidence of spinal lesion, poor growth, and high blood pressure. So how do you differentiate between acute pyelonephritis or upper UTI and cystitis or lower UTI clinically? In pyelonephritis, remember pyelonephritis is to be considered if there is bacteria and fever more than 38 degrees centigrade or higher as per NICE and bacteria or fever lower than 38 degrees centigrade but with loin pain or tenderness. That is local examination findings. On the other hand, cystitis should be considered in all other infants and children who have bacteria but no symptoms and signs positive. Serum C-reactive protein alone should not be used to differentiate pyelonephritis and cystitis. Now, as regards the management of urinary tract infection in less than 3 months of age, we know that these children are more susceptible of catching UTI and urine culture is definitely to be sent. So in these patients, you start parenteral antibiotics as the treatment of choice and this is IV third generation cephalosporin, for example, subtraxone plus minus aminoglycosides. However, in children 3 months to 16 years of age who are suspe suspected to have upper urinary tract infection, in those, the first choice oral antibiotic is cephalexin and amoxiclav only if culture results available and susceptible and the first choice IV antibiotic are amoxiclav Cefiroxim or Cefraxone, Gentamicin or Amicacin and these are as per the NICE guidelines. Similarly, acute management of lower urinary tract infection in children in 3 months to 16 years of age is trimethoprim and nitrofurantone as the first choice antibiotic and nitrofurantone, amoxicillin or cephalexin as the second choice of antibiotics. To prevent recurrence, one must address dysfunctional elimination syndromes like aneurysis, encopresis as well as constipation. 
one should encourage the child to drink an adequate amount of fluid and keep the body hydrated and should have ready access the child should have ready access to clean toilets whenever required and should not be expected to delay worrying neither should be scolded for the same antibiotic prophylaxis is not routinely recommended in children who have developed uti for the first time or those who have asymptomatic bacteriuria atypical uti mandates further workup and the clinical pointers are that the child would be seriously ill have a poor urine flow abdominal or bladder mass raised serum creatinine septicemia failure to respond to treatment with suitable antibiotics within 48 hours and infection with non e coli organisms recurrent uti on the other hand is two or more episodes of upper urinary tract infection then one episode of uti upper ur urinary tract infection plus one episode of lower urinary tract infection or more than equal to three episodes of lower urinary tract infection this is referred to as recurrent uti on follow up no regular follow up is required in those who have not undergone any imaging investigation those who have undergone but imaging investigations are normal they also don't require a follow up minor unilateral renal parenchymal defect unless they have recurrent uti or family history or lifestyle risk factors for hypertension asymptomatic bacteriuria and those who become asymptomatic following an initial episode of uti but follow up is definitely required in patients with bilateral renal parenchymal defects and they should be evaluated for high to weight blood pressure routine testing for proteinuria to watch for chronic kidney disease and those with bilateral renal abnormalities impaired kidney function raised blood pressure and or proteinuria they should receive monitoring and appropriate management by preferably pediatric nephrologist to slow the progression of chronic kidney disease thank you for your patient listening and have a very good day